Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today is going to be a little different from usual, in the sense that we are now in my new shop. Now I figured new shop, why fix up an old junkie outboard when we could fix up a brand new one? That's right, we have a brand new, never used, 34 year old outboard. I've been collecting dust for quite some time in my care. You've seen it in one other short, quick little video, and just the tiller handle. Give you an idea of the overall condition of it. I mean, look at the look at the starter engagement teeth. They're they're brand new, other than some dirt and some dust that's been gathering over the years. This thing is nice. Here's a shot of the opposite side. It's manual start, therefore manual primer. Everything about it. Pretty clean. All right, well, enough chit chat. Let's get it on the bench, get it ripped apart. So this comes from South Dakota, actually. I believe from, I don't know, Sioux Falls, Sioux City, Rapid City, I don't know, one of those cities. Um, the guy I had it from said his neighbor had it. The husband who owned the boat shop closed down for a little while due to health reasons, and then he passed away and the boat shop just never opened again leaving her with a collection of new, never used outboards that she had no interest in. And I guess they just sat around in her garage for decades until she sold them to her neighbor, who was an opportunist, brought them out here and tried to sell them for a fortune. Now he had a brand new 15 horsepower electric start as well. It was a long shaft that he planned on using on his little boat, which in my opinion, shouldn't have had a long shaft and was way overpowered, but he wasn't selling that one. So I wound up with this one. I didn't like the price he was offering because I could have went and just bought a new Honda or Yamaha or Tahatsu or a Mercury or anything else, probably two of them for the price he was asking. But I shot him an offer, he said no. And then a few days later, he said, okay, fine, you can have it. And here it is. And now that I see my camera, I know I need to rethink my lighting. But we'll worry about that later. I've always had a theory they painted the outboards assembled. That theory is kind of... Uh, coming into proof here considering the spark plugs are color matched to the cylinder head. Just because it's new, never used, doesn't mean it doesn't have problems. You gotta remember that parts in here are 34 years old, they've started to go bad. Mainly, um, think about it, the water pump. We know when it was changed last, 34 years. So it's a little past its uh, seasonal rotation, so we need to get a water pump into it. Secondly, it's the uh, this may just be unique to this hose because the rest of them feel quite soft and pliable, uh, mainly the pressure line over here and then all of the fuel lines. They all feel fine. They're not hard, they're not cracking, they're not dried. So I don't think I need to replace all of the lines. However, I did buy a whole bunch of them just in case that does need to happen. Um, I think as far as under the power head goes, all I really need to, need to do is change this hose and then the water pump. All right, let's get this hose swapped out. Bottom bolts of these are never fun to get to, so let's go ahead and do the first top, shall we? Now, the reason I need to do this is just to get the hose beneath it. I really don't want to mess with any of the washers or anything. But... Well, since I don't want to break anything, I'm going to make a little incision along the hose which just falls right off anyway, so that's good. All right, I have a piece of generic 316 strain hose. There's the part number in case you're curious. The wall is a little bit thinner on this than the original stuff, which isn't really gonna matter. It's a water hose, who cares, but It'll fit into that connector just a little bit better. So that's why I am all for it. So we only need about 12 inches, which is all I ordered. So that's good. Well, now that our power head repairs are done, we're going to continue on to the lower unit. I'm going to make a uh, standalone video for how to do the water pump. So in this video, I'm just kind of going to laze right through it. Slide the propeller off. Now, right off the bat, 
I noticed there's no grease on this propeller shaft, so I'm going to be re-greasing it, of course. All right, it's not sliding down, which is a little concerning for a few reasons. Let's see. I will show you why shortly. But I can see that the paint is pretty clearly too thick right here. So I'm hoping I can slice the paint. It might release its little bond it's got going on. What I did was I put a bolt in here. Give it a couple little love taps. Now, here are my concerns thus far. Granted, those were painted together. There's, there's no doubt there that, that paint was doing a little bit of sticking and holding. Also, the uh, green phosphor primer here, with that and the paint on the lower, probably stuck itself together. So I'm, I'm not going to fault them for that. However, once that was free, it was still a bit of a pull to get this out of there. But it really uh, shouldn't have been. The drive shaft has just just a pinch, and I mean a pinch, of grease up there. Um, it is old already. You can already see the the uh, the rust kind of forming inside of the little splines there. That shouldn't have been a thing. Then I got a little piece of steel wool. We can clean it up. So with that situation remedied, there's a couple other notable things here. The lack of grease on the propeller shaft, that's, that's kind of uh, concerning. There should have been new from the factory. Uh, second thing, the main bolt here that runs through the back, you can see the evidence of the uh, gasket sealing compound, which is what they used as a anti-seize, but there's so, so little on there, it's not even funny. The same with the... Uh, the two lower screws. One's got some evidence on some of some on there, but the other one, come on camera. Focus. So you can see some evidence of some on there. Very, very little. The other bolt, nothing. Now these engines slash lower units are kind of plagued with a problem. Uh, first and foremost, the main problem is the drive shaft getting stuck into the power head. Happens all the time. Whenever there's a question of, you know, drive shaft stuck in the power head, most of the time it's an 80s, four, six, or eight horsepower. Happens all the time. Second thing that happens is the screws that run through here break off and then, you know, th that's at least fixable. The other thing is the propeller shaft seizes on there all the time. After taking apart this outboard with, you know, no hours on it, I can understand why that happens to so many people. Fresh water or salt water, even worse, it's it's going to happen. From when they were new, you needed to take these things apart and you needed to grease everything up. I think that's the only way these engines are going to last. Unfortunately, this video is over 30 years late and I think the damage on these things are probably already done. Uh, if you're going to buy one of these, maybe take the propeller off, drop the lower then buy one. Uh, with any luck, they were, the survivors that are still out there were using fresh water. They were maintained, so two years after use, they were taken apart, new propeller, and then everything would have been re-greased and reassembled anyway, thus being okay. But if you come across one that's never really been maintained, you may have a lot of problems on your hand. And that's, that's kind of a concern. No anti-seize, Loctite, Gasket compound, absolutely nothing on these bolts. Wanted to see how bad this rubber was. Let's see if I actually needed to do this. As you can see, it's not really springing back to where it's supposed to go. So yeah, it's it's done for. If I flip it over, not that I'm going to, but if I were to flip it over and reinstall, you can see all the uh, Stupid camera. Anyway, you can see hairline little cracks forming. If I did flip it over, I think I would just break veins, clog up the motor, and that'd be the end of it. 
So new water pump is a good idea. Next notable thing is looks like the original impeller here. Come on camera. Looks like a steel inner. New one, brass, so if rust is a concern. Original, not so good. Uh, last summer I bought a new bottle of gasket sealing compound, so that's good. I'm glad I had that on on hand. Gonna go ahead and open that up. Some of the some of the comments that people leave me, like you know, mean ones like "this guy sucks," his videos are boring. I like replying to those with something just like I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I know this guy is such a hack. I I hate watching his videos. I, I have some of the best replies. I think they're great. Now that is some of the nicest oil I, I've ever seen come out of a lower before. You, let's say you just put the oil in. You, there's still dirt. Well, okay, now we got some little stuff flying out of there. But anyway, let's say you just did the oil. The oil. You're still there. The gears and everything inside of there still are dirty oil on them. So you're always going to have dirty oil coming back out. But up until recently, this this stuff just it looked nice. I don't know what the little fine dirt particles are about. Maybe it's part of the machining process. The uh, the oil they used for that mixed with this oil and that's what we're seeing coming out now all right it's time to fill this back up i have some fluid and a little pump okay i have some triple guard grease here the propeller shaft itself. Make sure the propeller doesn't seize itself on there. Okay, propeller. It's back on. Put in our drive pin. I'm gonna grease that bad boy up too. Well, there it is. Better than new. Because it's probably not going to rust itself together now. Alright, last thing I want to do to this is grease those zerk fittings. Uh, something tells me it's never been done before. Well, all of our maintenance is done. We got a new water pump, we got some new gear lube, we uh, greased things, changed the hose, so... The only thing left to do really is see if it starts. Join me here next week and I will fire this thing up. Kidding. Let's go put this thing in some water. Now, this era of outboard isn't made to be run on muffs. It needs to be run in the water. So I have a small tank of water here filling up that I'll be running it in. So let's go ahead and hook up the gas. Now, it won't run the way it is right now. Can you guess why, dear viewer? Correct. No safety lanyard. You'd be surprised how many people ask me why their upboard won't start. Well, do you have the safety lanyard on? Uh, the what? <laughs> okay. Now we're good. Now it should fire. Now don't, don't judge me on the cleanliness of the water. It's actually the tank that was very dirty. Uh, we are almost to full. Ideally, we get the water right about to where the uh, water pump is. So another couple inches and we'll be ready. Well, I had the door open for this, but the lighting just made it look terrible. 
All right, I'm gonna go a little bit past the shift point of the indicator here. A couple of pumps. May or may not be doing anything. Let's see what happens. Yep, started up okay. Pumping water, good sign. Tightening it down first. See if our lightning storm continues. We are right on top dead center. Advance it advances too. As it slows down, it slows down. A good idle speed. Wherever it's supposed to be. Say we're at operating temperature. Cylinder head is warm but not burning. I let it uh, run itself out of gas there. I do that every time I take a motor out. Some people say it's bad for it, some people don't. But I've, I've had engines like, you know, sitting around for a year and that's all I do is I unplug the gas, let themselves run out of gas. When I go to use it again, put gas in it, they fire right back up. I've been doing that for a long time and I've, I've had quite good luck with it. So, eh, that's just my thing. So, one last thing about this motor, if you notice this decal, 100 to 1, if you're familiar with outboards, usually you go 50 to 1. That was an idea they had in the uh, mid 80s and they did a quick recall on it and the recall was basically removing that decal and putting on a 50 to 1. Uh, I might do that just because, but oh, it's kind of neat being there too. Anyway, don't run them at 100 to 1. I mean, you can, but best not to. Well. That is it for now. Join me next video where I put this on a boat and do the break-in procedure, which is going to be a little challenging for me, but more on that in the next video. All right, everybody. See you later.